the Blu-ray of, the, of, the, of Deathly Hallows Part 1 is great. I think there's a lot of different things within it that, or on it that, that I think audiences will find um, really enjoyable. There's a scene from the new Harry Potter film from Deathly Hallows Part 2, a little tease, which I think is great. The maximum movie mode where uh, the audience, the viewers, are taken on a bit of a magical uh, guide through uh, the making of Harry Potter with uh, various cast members. I think little bits even from ourselves. Um, we uh, trying it. to yeah, We ruined it. J Jason Isaac, it's actually it's the Jason Isaac show, really <laughs> and truthfully, because he was so committed to it. He cancelled appointment after appointment, I think, to... Um, uh, he had so much information to give, and he's such a natural. Um, but it, it, we try and guide um, uh, the, the viewers through certain aspects of uh, filmmaking, actually, the process, how things were made, and uh, things that we remember. Um, uh, uh, about why we made certain choices and how we made certain choices. Um, and I think they might find that, uh, well, we hope they'll find that really, really interesting. One of my favorite scenes in, in Deathly Hallows Part 1 is the, what we refer to as the Seven Harrys. And it's a scene where uh, the Order of the Phoenix and Harry's friends have arrived to take him away from Privet Drive. And uh, it's going to be a very dangerous uh, journey. We were, in, um, we were in the publicity room and they said to us, oh guys, we want to do something with you, you and Rupert and possibly Tom, like at a driving range or something. So I thought, actually, because Rupert and I went away to play golf together a couple of months before, so we said, oh, why don't we do this again? So we said, why don't we actually just play golf um, and you could follow us around? And we just kept, and, they said, and once they said yes to that, it was, well, it would be good to play at a championship course because people would know it. And then I think James came in with, yeah, what about Celtic Manor where the Ryder Cup's held? Because the American audience will be able to relate to that. And then it became a holiday for everyone else to go down. And it was, it was really fun, really fun. But it was, it was all good. And the way they've edited in other stuff as well, uh, like us going around with a handy cam when we're not filming, just showing how we, keep in, how, we keep, how we don't get bored and how we keep ourselves entertained. It's, uh, it's a really cool, fun piece. And these guys cheated. Didn't cheat. But they'll have to buy the DVD to see what happens. <laughs> You have Jason uh, is hosting some of it. You have golf. You have running competitions. I think you have more on this Blu-ray than the ones before. I love the golf is thing. Um, you are, are you a golfer? Uh, I'm appalling. Really. Are you re well, okay, what's your handicap? I, I don't score. Don't I you? refuse to score. No, I take some balls and some sticks <laughs> and I go for a walk. And if somebody wants to come with me, that's fine. But um, because Rupert and... Um, James and Oliver s sort of started committing to, to golf quite... <coughs> when Rupert became 16, they started um, to stop having tutoring <laughs> on set and to play golf. And they used to go out and hit balls and they got lots of opportunities to play because there's loads of golf courses around Leavesden. And, <coughs> and Tom's not bad as well. And there's a... I haven't seen it yet, but I'd really like to see it. But there's a round with the four of them, <laughs> which I bet is funny. Because they're funny. The four of them together are thick as thieves. Um, so the Blu-ray's coming out now. Um, and then uh, in advance of the film, the 7-2, uh, uh, which will be out in the summer. So you'll be able to get your Blu-ray and get yourself primed up for the release of the, um, of the last one. Yeah, it was really fun. I think it gave us all the chance to dress up, which doesn't usually happen. <laughs> and I think the Delacours bring a bit of... Uh, glamour to the Weasley household, which isn't often there. In Deathly Hallows Part 1, we see Grip Hook again for the first time. We discover him in the cellar of Malfoy Manor. He's been captured there. And um, he's, a, he's an interesting character because you don't quite know where you are, which is, is common to all goblins. You never know. You shouldn't trust a goblin. And um, he's always got an agenda. So he's, he's, although he's trapped, he's thinking of, of how he can get out of here. He's thinking, how can he use the characters that are there? You know, how can he use Harry to escape? Um, you know, and, and uh, so he's very manipulative, very devious. It's a different setting to see Luna in, you know, normally she's just so, she's free and she's, she's not really worrying about anything, but this is where she's in a situation where she has to think, she has to keep a, a, a level head, like, you know, and, um, and she's covered in dirt and it's really, really unpleasant. What happens basically is there's a, a potion which um, you can take and turns you into anyone you want to be. So <laughs> all seven of them become Harry Potter, so that Harry Potter, the real Harry Potter, can escape. <laughs> and the attention is divided seven ways because the 
pathetic and all the Voldemort's gang are after them. And it, it, the, the way it was filmed, it was absolutely hilarious because he says, now, now I'm, no, wait a minute, who am I now? You're Hermione. Am I? No, who are you? You know, it's, it, you have to shoot it in the round like that. So each person's physical presence is described within the room, well, in the electronics of the room. You had to see Dan trying to be all these different yeah. people. He had, had to study all the actors he's yeah, been working physically. with for so long and uh, adopt all their uh, characteristics. And um, of course, when he turns into um, Clemence Posey, he has, a, has to put a bra on, which is uh, marvellous. <laughs> I think the fact that the focus was so much more on Dan, Rupert and I, or, or our characters, Hermione, Harry and Ron, um, I think that was really interesting and, and we were all really excited to have, you know, a chance to really showcase what we had learnt from, you know, all the six films that we'd done before. Um, and that, it, you know, like basically it was about us, which was amazing. And, you know, the films really started with our relationship and our friendship and, and it kind of, the story really ends focused on the three of us as well, which I think is really nice and, and it was, I just think it, it was a really rewarding experience. Um, so, yeah, it was good. And so you have these seven people who look exactly the same. But David Yates had Daniel Radcliffe actually show a little bit of each person's character as they were dressing and looking like Harry himself. I watched him do, uh, do me, and uh, that's quite close, really, uncannily close, a bit frightening, really. It was almost mirrored. You start to look at people in a very analytical way when you're kind of studying them. Like Rupert walks with a real wiggle in his hips. You know, it's, it's, it's actually quite a sexy walk, if, if, you know, if that's appropriate to say. It's really weird kind of watching someone kind of pretend to be you. It's, it did it really well and it's it kind of got all my, my posture and everything down and it was, it was quite strange. It was really interesting for all of us to be involved in directing, basically, because we know, we know those characters and also in, in our own habits and how we move and how we say things and to make it real. The most surprising thing was how quickly I got Emma. I, I was because I, I hadn't really done that much kind of work on it particularly. Harry, your eyesight really is awful. Well, I was expecting him to be really, really difficult. And David Yates just went, yep, we got that. Okay. With the other ones, we'd all been going to like 10, 11, 12 takes on all of them. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, we met Professor Lupin. Now, he was a mentor to Harry at Hogwarts, but he left the school after it was revealed that he was a werewolf. Then there's Mad-Eye Moody. He made an appearance in the fourth film, although it wasn't quite himself. That Mad-Eye Moody was actually Barty Crouch Jr., an imposter, who disguised himself as Mad-Eye using Polyjuice Potion. The first time we see the real Mad-Eye Moody in action is in the fifth film, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. We've lost his lead, but we're very keen to get it back. Oh, and, uh, he's playing terrible. <laughs> he, he's terrible. He, keep, he keeps finding the sand. And these bunkers, they're really unforgiving when you go in them, and I seem to be finding a lot of them. He was in that bunker for about 10 minutes. Easily. I thought he was building a little castle, <laughs> a little moat. You know. Well, I don't think he researched the bunkers, <laughs> which is why he's having problems with. Starting to really bring out the A game. I think so, yeah. I think we've, we've let them come back into it now. We, let, we, let, we did let them have a one-shot lead to begin with. I reckon this will all be over by the 16th. <laughs> They're looking quite confident and smug. But I can't see that lasting anymore. Nah. It's not a very good goal for us, really. Sorry. We do kind of give Oliver quite a hard time. Just, I think he's just kind of... Um, we kind of always joke that he's a bit of a kind of grandpa. And he's kind of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, quite old before his time.
Potter, you're underage, which means you've still got the trace on you. What's the trace? If you sneeze, the ministry will know who wipes your nose. The point is, we have to use those means of transport the trace can't detect. Brooms, testrels and the like, we go in pairs. That way, if anyone's out there waiting for us, and I reckon there will be, they won't know which Harry Potter is the real one. The real one? I believe you're familiar with this particular brew. No. Absolutely not. Told you you'd take it well. Uh, no, if you think I'm going to let everyone risk their lives for me... I, I... Never done that before, have I? No. No. This is different. I mean, taking that, becoming me. No. Well, none of us really fancy it, mate. Yeah, imagine if something went wrong and we ended up a screwy specky git forever. Everyone here is of age, Potter. Fair warning. It tastes like goblin piss. I have lots of experiences with that, dear Maddo. Just trying to diffuse the tension. Identical. 